are obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, you want your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Well, hey there, everyone. It's Connie Fife, your Unstoppable Diva, and we're back for another episode of the Connie Fife Show. So thanks for being here and coming back every single week. It's because of our listeners just like you that makes this a fantastic, award-winning podcast. Now, what we talk about is just about anything, but anything really to do with business and to help all of you entrepreneurs out there that are really looking for those Secret sauce, so that secret ingredients that are that saying, I want to be a lifestyle entrepreneur. Maybe you're still sitting in corporate. Maybe you're, you know, you have that foot out the door, whether you're a successful woman or successful guy, but you're saying, I want to do it. I want to do it my way. And we're bringing you the secret sauce to make that happen. Now, today's guest, oh, you're going to love her. <laughs> I, I, before I even met her, I was loving on her. Uh, when I looked at her background, I was like, oh my God, I just want to work with her. And we need to have her on our label because she is, uh, her story is just amazing and she could just help so, so many people. She is the killer pitch master. Yes. And, KPS. Yes. And if you want to be in this business, you need to have a killer pitch. I mean, even if you're still sitting in corporate and you have this amazing sales team, they need to have a killer pitch because Definitely. we are all in sales. I mean, every single one of us are in sales and you need to know how to have that killer pitch. Her name alone is a killer uh, as soon as I heard her name, I was like, oh, man, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I walked I walked around all day. And even with my team, they're saying, like, what do you do? Because I just kept saying precious, precious, precious. Her name is precious. Precious Williams. Welcome to the Connie Fife Show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, my God. So awesome. I mean, that name alone is a stage name. Definitely. Definitely. And people really think it is a stage name. I'm like, no, that's my real name. Yeah, you could be out there. I'm a dancer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Now you've been on some, you've been on the Shark Tank. Yes, I've been on Shark Tank season eight, 2016. <laughs> and she knows the day and time. <laughs> uh, I mean, some of those folks out there. Um, yeah, I've been, I have not been on the Shark Tank, but uh, uh, yeah, I've been, you know, uh, rub, rub elbows with some of those folks out there. You've been on ABC, NBC. I mean, the list goes on and mm-hmm. on and on. And you, um, you're, you're teaching some of the greats on how to pitch yes. how to be how to be that pitch master you have some other fabulous things out there um uh, a lingerie line yes that, we, was, we no longer have that but it's all started with the lingerie line it's girl, girl, lingerie. started with the lingerie line and i was like ah, damn she doesn't have that anymore I um, know, and i'm a curvy girl I know we still need to bring that back. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I, yeah I, got, I got the curves here too. Yeah, uh, we I think we need to bring that back. I was like, we need to resurrect that one, right? Right. Um. So, I mean, really, I mean, how did you know that that this was for you? How how did you know that you had this unique gift and talent? You know what? It's not something I knew. Like I've been a professional speaker since I was 16 years old, which people are still like 16. I, I, you were paid at 16. I'm like, yes, I was. Yes, I was. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in, in 2011, I, you know, I'm a former attorney, did not want to be an attorney anymore. I know. I seen that, too. And I'm like, oh, my God, she's even in law. Oh, man, <laughs> I just did not want to go to court anymore. And I'm a litigator. So, you know, oh, I'm this a dramatic, I got everything. Later, but 
I was dating this very famous Hollywood actor dude. He's now deceased, but he mm. used to make me feel so good about myself. I was 327 pounds. I'm not that anymore. And the way he used to make me feel about myself, I wanted every woman who was a size 14 or larger to feel that way because it's an mm. incredible feeling when you're wanted as you are. Right. And so, you know, I quit every job I've ever had. <laughs> mm. I've never had a job last longer than a year in my life. And that's how you know you're different. So yeah. I had negative four hundred dollars in my bank account because you know you already know when you start now if you're just doing the best you can. Yeah, and I, you know, had this vision. God gave me a vision saying you're going to be on television. Now, of course, I'm telling it to my friends, and they're like, "Yeah, right. You're 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 three twenty seven. You're a size twenty eight. You don't have any connections on TV. How's this going to happen? Right. And you know, I was given another vision of going to. Uh, the small business award ceremony, which is a very big deal here in New York, the small business. Mm-hmm. Awards. I didn't have the money to buy the ticket. So I got a credit card, put the $300 on it. And I walked in. And of course, when you go to big events, you have media sponsors. Right. And see, all I knew is CNBC and MSNBC were going to be in the room. Right. Well, you know, you walk in, I'm looking as cute as I can in my size 28 self, you know, and I went to the restroom, had a conversation with God and he was like, you know what? MSNBC it is. So I walked into the producers. I did not know what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. I was nervous. My bladder was full. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm about to do this. I don't know what I'm about to say, but I know that this is the night. So I walked up. They're laughing, joking, kikiing. And then they asked me who I am. And I said, well, I'm glad you asked. My name is Precious Williams. And I'm the proud founder and CEO of Curvy Girls Lingerie. With the ultimate shopping experience for full figure divas and plus size fashionistas. When I tell you, they looked at me and started laughing. Like, you thought, oh, I'm supposed to be good stuff, you know? Right. Good stuff. And they were laughing hard. I'm like, that was supposed to be my best word. And they were like, no, 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 that was good. We've never had anyone ever walk up to us at an event and pitch us. And I was thinking, that's what I did. So they were like, have you ever thought about being on our show Elevator? You walked up there with that confidence. You owned it. And, and that's and when I realized I had rock confidence. Delivered it, right. So then they brought the host, J.J. Ramberg, and she's walking towards me. And I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm going to say. Oh, my God. God, give me whatever you can give me. And you're like, she I just delivered my best stuff. What else do I got? Right, right. I just delivered my best. <laughs> and so then the, they brought me her booking producer, tall, elegant, black woman. She walks up to me. She gives me that look. <laughs> What's your elevator pitch? I didn't know what to say, but I was right. like, lips, don't fail me now. I was going hard. I was like, Jordan, 96, 97, <laughs> back to back. She was like, stop. You can be on the show. Luckily, it was dark and I had on glasses because I'm telling you, I was fighting back tears oh. because I couldn't believe how easy it was. All right. And so she asked me for my business card. Now, y'all know I had no money. So, of course, I didn't have any business cards. So I right. said, I've been here all night. I ran out of cards. She's like, oh, okay, no problem. Here's mine. Okay. I don't know how I got home that night because I had money to get there and I didn't have money to get home. Right. But when I got home, I was emailing her and she's just like she so she calls me she's like precious where's your website oh what you what your audience may not know is my company wasn't real it was just in my mind so i told her i said oh you know what we're going through rebranding process at this point by the time i'm on the show we'll be ready she's like oh okay, no problem. Mm-hmm. the killer pitch master was being born so by the time you know i was on before valentine's day and every, we had everything by then we had everything right. together they came and picked me up in a Cadillac Escalade and I'm tripping hard because my girl was supposed to do my makeup, but she thought I was lying. So she didn't show up. I get to Rockefeller Center and mind you, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Rockefeller Center is like this huge dream place. Right. And here but, I am but you're cool. Through, I'm but you're cool. Through, <laughs> and I'm and Melissa Harris Perry, Alex, with all of these great, you know, the, the great hosts on the weekends were there and they were all like, yeah, we're going to come see you. We've heard so much great things about you. This is my first elevator pitch ever. So when we when we filmed it, I just remember after I finished pitching, I went deaf. I didn't hear anything. Right. And so when I was watching the the episode, of course, they, they afterwards I, I start to hear again. They were like, "Oh my god, you were so right. good!" You because were- the adrenaline just went. It did, and <laughs> my phone rang off the hook for two weeks straight investors like listen can we set up a meeting like i'd love to meet with you five you want five hundred thousand dollars okay but i'm like oh my god i literally had negative four hundred dollars in my bank account i'm about to flip this into five hundred thousand dollars that never happens to a black woman it never happens i was like oh my god i did this and then they said msnb says that they ranked it as one of the top five in the history of the show 
And then they were like, because of you, more people of color have now submitted to be on the show. Right. And I was like, oh, I was like, all we didn't need to do was see it. And I saw it in my mind where I was supposed to be. And so starting Curvy Girls Lingerie off on that, I started entering pitch competitions. And out of 14 mm-hmm. competitions, I was a 13-time champion. And I, I mean, went, you, were, you, are, you are a trailblazer and you didn't even realize. No, what, I didn't. I didn't. you had I done. Mean, a lot of people were like, you know, who cares about fat girls and lingerie? I was like, you'd be amazed that there are over 40 million women, size 14 and larger in the United States, just like me. And we always pretty I, But I, it wasn't even a fact that it was, and I'm going to say your words, but I mean, I'm, I'm chesty. I'm, I'm, I'm the 14 size right now, mm-hmm. but it was big girls in lingerie. It was a fact that you were a trailblazer of large women in lingerie that was putting themselves out there. And then later when people found out your backstory, yeah. that this was your, that this was your first time, but even for you to sit there and say, I can't believe I just did this in front of all of these people. Uh, I mean, kudos to you for, you. for, for everything that, that, that you, that you did. And sometimes we, we do things and don't realize the magnitude no. of what we've done. No. I mean, I, we, I had, I had something actually said to me recently, they said, uh, you're going to be named the next M- MC, MCs, or what I mean, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Yeah. The, M- the oh, what the hell? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. And they said, you're going to be the next, named the next MCC. And I said, oh, what is that? And they said, you're being named that you don't even know what it is. I said, I, I don't know what that is. And, and I don't even know if I'm getting them the initials, the next create, the, the creative artist agency. And, and I didn't even know what it, what it meant. <laughs> and of course, I can, I'm sitting there and the person's telling me that. And, and, and my husband heard me and he had to come in and I'm on the phone with him and he had to come in and hand me a note because he looked it up and he handed me a note and gave it to me. And I went, oh, I was just joking. I know what that means. <laughs> right. I'm so honored. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I didn't know because, you know, we work and work and work and work. And we're trying so hard. And sometimes I know we don't pay attention to what all of these no. accolades. I mean, some people do. Yeah, but we don't pay attention to to what all of these accolades and where, where we're going. Not at all. Not at all. Now, you, you know, big logos and stuff like that. But like, you really have no idea. And, you know, as a 30 some odd year old black woman. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen, you know, people can throw up Oprah, they can throw up Wendy Williams, they can throw up those people. Right. But my aspiration isn't to be the next them, it's to be mm-hmm. the first Precious Williams. Right. And I want to do it like Frank Sinatra, old blue eyes glistening. I want to mm-hmm. do it my way. You want to do it your and way. And I don't, I don't, I don't need to follow her path or her right. path. I can, like you said, a trailblazer. Yes. You know what? And with trailblazers, what we often forget is we'll get the bumps and the bruises. Right. It will be beautiful, but it will be bumps and bruises because you're right. forced to do it. Right. And so people will forget the bumps and bruises you won't because you're going to be, remember, you know, I remember when that person told me I'd never speak on television or, you know, mm-hmm. when I was an attorney and I quit all of those jobs, I remember saying, you'll never work in this town again. And I remember having the testicular fortitude to say, they'll know my name before they know yours. I promise you mm-hmm. that. And they're like. You'll never work in this town again. I bet you I will. Uh, yeah. I bet you my billboard's going to be in Times Square. That's what? right. And when my uh-huh. billboard was in Times Square with my book, they were like, she was right. Yeah. And they st- stood up and took notice. So yeah. what is it, besides them knowing Precious Williams, and who could forget that name? <laughs> what is it that you want? How do you want to make a difference in the world? Well, I really want to teach women entrepreneurs and speakers how to fly beyond their wildest, wildest dreams. Mm. My book coach said to me, you know, write your obituary, which sounds macabre, right? Mm -hmm. But I wrote it in poetic form. Mm. And I talked about, you know, the dash, the dash. Okay. The, The space between the dash has to matter. So for me, 
when a woman achieves something she never thought possible or she had a dream about it, but she right. she needed a woman to hold her hand to walk with her. Right. Because for so long I've walked alone. Right. I've had to walk alone because mm-hmm. there were people who thought I was too big for my britches or right. who do I think I am. So I had to walk this journey alone. And now I get to show them you can pitch to media. You can pitch and get those big speaking engagements. You don't have mm-hmm. to be Tony Robbins or Lisa Nichols or any of these people, because I'm here to tell you, I've been booked by LinkedIn and Google right. and Microsoft and right. my name isn't their name, but I got a darn good name. Right. right and right. had I not been a champion, had I not written a, a number one bestselling book, mm-hmm. had I not walked into my own purpose, none of this would be possible. Right. And one of the greatest coaches I've ever met, Ty Goodwin, she said, until you step into your purpose, mm-hmm. another woman can't step into hers. So people exactly. need to see you be successful to know, you know what, if she did it, then right. it is possible. The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find The Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C-Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play, Apple Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Pipe, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website, ConnieFiveShow.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. Well, you bring up a really good point too, that you had, you had to walk in this alone because for way too long, women were not there for each other. Right. And women were the first to knock each other down. And like you said, you, you, you walked it alone way too fast to judge each other. And that is changing. Yes, I mean, definitely that is, changing. that is, that is definitely, definitely changing. And there's, there's a, a meme, you know, that I see on Facebook all the time that don't be the first to knock her crown off, be the first to put her, fix her crown and put what? her crown. What? Yes. And, and I love it. I, I really love it. You know, be the first to fix her crown and put her crown back on her. Yes. Okay. And I, I, I love that, that one's, that one so much. And that's what we do need to be, you know, helping each other and, and building each, each other up for years. And I mean, I've been a, an, a corporate executive, a corporate CEO for years and years and years. I was a CEO with Girl Scouts, you know, Penn's Woods Council. And even then, I, I mean, I was witness of women knocking each other down. Um, I mean, I would join women's groups and I was the first one to run out of women's groups because I would see that happening. Uh, just a couple of years ago, I started a women's group and immediately I started seeing that happening. I'm like, come on, could we stop? Could we start supporting each other? Can, you know, when are we going to start helping each other? And, and I am the first one to be an advocate of working beyond the Me Too movement. And that's what my new book is about, is working beyond that, because I have a lot of abuse myself as a child and from working in corporate. But we need to move beyond that, because if we stay in that place, we're never going to grow. And I mean, you know, we we have to recognize it, but we can't stay in the place of victimhood because we, we do need to move beyond that. But we also need to get back to supporting and growing and helping each other. And that's exactly what I see you doing. So I I, I applaud you so much for, for doing that and in the success that you've had and and the challenges that you've that you've had in in being that trailblazer in that path for for women, for women of color and for women everywhere. Definitely. I, it, it's very important that we hold each other's hand. Now, mind yes. you, I'm not in corporate America, so I, mm-hmm. I imagine how cutthroat it can be. But I can tell you as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. as a CEO, the challenges are still there because yeah. there are some people who don't believe a woman of color should be anywhere except mm-hmm. for behind someone who doesn't who isn't a person of color. And I'm here to say that, listen, I was born with a purpose. Right. I was born mm-hmm. with a vision and it is to unlock the gift of speech in others. 
especially mm-hmm. women. And yeah. one of the reason why I work as hard as I do is because I find that women think they have to be perfect or thin or all that. I'm like, yeah. this, I did this at 327 pounds. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to tell you, I was on the phone with uh, my girl, Selena. She has a conference coming up in um, July and I'm speaking at her conference. And we were just having a conversation. Yeah. And I said, you know, when I would get on those stages at 327 pounds or I would get on television at 327 pounds, I would channel Beyonce. Because I was like, you know what? When I walk, I walk with a vengeance. And when I talk, I'm not pretending. My talent alone shines brighter than anything else I can do. Mm. And I know I'm talented. Mm. And not, not a talent that I haven't nursed and worked. I work on my talent every freaking day. Day Day. of my life. I have corporate clients. I have individual clients. I have speaking engagements all over the world. I stay thirsty on the grind. That's what we say. Young people, I heard them say, thirsty on the grind. (laughs) And I am someone who wants to constantly and consistently improve in my craft. So I'm not talking about things that happened years ago when people need to know about the here and the now. How do they get paid speaking engagements? How do you get the big boys to pay you attention? What if you have negative $400 and you can't afford a PR company to get you in Forbes magazine? Right. Which I've, all, I've never paid for PR in my life. I just mm-hmm. knew how to do it. Right. And I knew that when you celebrate difference and when you walk in your difference, you shine brighter than people who want to be the, and for lack of a better term, the me too. It's like, oh, she's doing that. So let me just do what she does. No. Right. No. When they're zigging, we zag. When they go low, we go high. We, exactly. I don't want to be like everybody else. Exactly. Exactly. I, I've been all about we go high. I've been saying that for years and years. I, I Oh my God. I've, I've always said that, you know, when is that, there's something challenging, I'm like, let him go that way. Cause I'm going that way. Right. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I've never been the follower ever. No, never. And I think that that's, that that's the, that's the trait of a trailblazer. Right. Right. I see you and I, I respect your gangster. Yeah. Uh-huh. But respect, respect old blue eyes. Cause that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I love it my way. Uh, we have so many. We have so many things going on. I have a, I have a trophy in my my bookshelf saying that I was a trailblazer my, last year. Um, I got an award for that. But um, but yeah, like I said, they zig, I zag. You know, I've never been. And of course, you have people looking at you and saying, "Why are you doing that?" Because why do you always have to be the rabble riser. Why can't you just follow the? Why can't yeah. you follow the party line? Because it's not yeah, me. It's not me, and I get it from family. I get it from friends. You know, yeah, it comes. It comes from. It comes from everywhere. But yeah, you does. know what? When you do what works for you, it people are going to see that, and they are going to recognize that. You know why and, we respect people? Why we respect certain people and not others? Yeah. Because they had the courage to do something that most of us don't have. Right. That's why you can look, it's mostly men you throw out because it's, you know, but you think about it, like I will say to anybody, Mm -hmm. as much as I love Bill Gates and as much as I love Steve Jobs, as much as I didn't have a garage, so I couldn't start in a garage. Mm. I had to start on a laptop in a room. Right. Just start. From there. Just start. Just start. Exactly. Just start. With what you have. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very quick to talk about negative four hundred dollars mm-hmm. is not a it's not a game. That's real. Right. That's real. That is real. And you know, I, I was a single mom for years and years and years. And um a couple and my, Yeah. And my, my daughter and I have a daughter and a son. And I had guilt, guilt, guilt for years and years and years because I always carried a negative checkbook mm-hmm, as quick mm-hmm. as it came in and quick as it came out. I worked multiple jobs plus went to school, you, you know, you know, the, the drill. And my daughter and I always had a challenge. Again, we're two females, right? Always, always butting head, butting head, butting head. And then uh, about three, four years ago, um, her husband's in the military. So he was out of town. So I went and stayed with her and we drank a lot of wine. We cried a lot. We drank a lot of wine. We cried more. Um, and we finally just came to, we were just two very strong women. And she's, you know, an adult now. And, and that following Christmas, she gave me uh, my Angelo's book. And she gave me a charm that said, she said she would. And she did. I cried for hours. And that was our breakthrough. And she recognized that her mom wasn't, you know, the everyday stay at home mom. That was, 
And she recognized that. And that's okay because my mom is a trailblazer. And, there, and, and it's not going to be easy. And right. And it wasn't easy. And now I just, I, like I said, I, I cry and I'm not a crier, <laughs> um, but I, I, I cried, I think, for, for forever that she, she got me. You know that, and now she's become her mother. <laughs> that, that that is such a, a heartwarming story, and I mm-hmm. had something similar happen. I don't have children, and I don't have a husband, but mm-hmm. so I was in Boston with my client this weekend. Her name mm-hmm. is Linda Samuels, and she for Christmas, you know. So before we were started working together, I was like, "Oh, she's going to give me problems." You know, this one's hardcore. I thugged out. I love it. So. She sends me for Christmas this thing in the mail, and it's the world's greatest coach. Now, you know, I never expected that. I I thought, yeah. you know, she busted my busted my chops all the time. Right. She sent me the world's greatest. <coughs> I'm go visit her this weekend because she's getting ready to prepare to be on a big television show. Mm-hmm. And she'd been work, working towards it for years, but she never had someone coach her through the process. Right. So we're sitting in her kitchen, and she hands me this bag, and I'm thinking, oh, this is so cute. What is it? Yeah. And it's a necklace and it's a, it's a diamond necklace and it says guardian angel. And I said, it was so much for me. Cause you know, my client doesn't look anything like me. And I, and I told her, I said, you know, I don't know what led you to want to work with someone who doesn't look like you. Right. <laughs> but I just really want you to know, thank you for having me in your home, taking care of me this whole weekend. I said, but you didn't have to give me that. She said, you are my guardian. She said, I've been waiting years for someone like you. Hmm. She said, you just do so much. She said, right. I see you grind and you work with me. You know, I'm not the easiest and you kept going. And um, I'm looking at the necklace now and I was just like, I have the greatest clients. Because if you could take before Shark Tank, before I did, it, before I was, did any of those things, it was right. only a dream. Right. And for you to, to look at me and say, she did it. Yeah. I'm going to rock with her. Yeah. Before I wrote my book, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches, before the billboard in Times Square, before Forbes magazine wrote about me, you still rock with me. Right. Thank you. You know, so I mm. I totally understand. You see, I got all choked up because I was like a right. crying angel, world's greatest coach. Thank you. Yes. I don't yeah. do it for myself. No. I, right. We we don't. I, I have um, I, I keep a box. Um, I, I call it my thank you box. And I, I have things from clients as well like that. But we do. I, I get emotional. I get choked up because I do what I do because of them. Yeah. You know, I was a speaker. I mean, I still speak. I was, you know, became a professional speaker. I've been in this business for, this is my 13th year now. I get more enjoyment of helping my talent yes. get in front of the camera, get on the big stage get the accolades than I did when I was actually on that platform. Word. Word. It, uh, I mean, it, I, I, I have goosebumps. I get more enjoyment doing this than I was in front of the camera myself. That's why the dash is so important. What are you going to do yes. with your dash? What mm-hmm. do you do with the space between the time you're born and the time That's you, right. you, you leave? My dash mm-hmm. is about, and I, I see myself walking beside women holding their hands through the process. I started something called securing your speaking bag in 2020. Mm-hmm. And we just met for our first time on Sunday night, which was a very difficult night. Cause I was, you know, a relationship has just ended. And um, I started, you know how when you, a relationship ends, you cut your hair off, you do all sorts of oh, things. Yeah. Whether it's good or bad. Right? Good or bad, right. <laughs> and so I started, I started eliminating myself from different groups and stuff like that. I was like, oh, this served me. I'm out. I'm out. Right. So I get on this Zoom call and, you know, we're right. going in. We're, you know, me and my girls, we're going in, right? <laughs> and from all over the country, we're going in. You know, what's your speaking bag? What's your big, hairy, audacious goal? We're going we gonna to secure the bag this year. Um, oh, what wow. you're saying, you know, so yeah. we were doing my thing. And they were like, they were like, girl, you hype. I said, I'm hype because you know what? Nothing can stop you. Just like That's nothing right. can stop me. No relationship, no feeling like last place, none of that all off of yourself. You have a community here of women who want to support you. I yes. am not in competition with any of y'all. I know my greatness. Just like right. I, I see all your greatness. If you need help, 
you contact your sister and you contact me. Well, that's to make exactly sure you, you get talk there. about you talk about the competition because I, I tell them too, I'm not here to be in competition with you. Because even as a speaker, I actually I had myself on as a speaker for a while because I'll get I'll get people to call me to speak too. Right. But I, I said, you know what? I'm not competing with you. If they're asking me to speak, it's not to talk about leadership or anything like that. I go out there and I'm talking about you. Exactly. Yeah. And my word that dash, my word is impact. Ooh. My word is impact. And I want to impact one person at a time. You know what my word is? What's your one word? Audacity. Oh, I love that too. And intention. Love that too. Love that too. So I, 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 I know we could keep on going. Girl, and we could go all night. You know how we do. We could go all night. Okay. So where, so where are you going from here? I mean, you have some fabulous stuff going on. So, so I have a, I have oh, a, a like a whole, I'm a hashtag booked and busy as a speaker, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, I have link, the, I have the LinkedIn conference coming up on the 28th. I have right. stuff coming up on the 13th. I'm speaking to the CEOs of major um, New York city nonprofits on the 13th. Then I fly out on the 13th to go hit, pick up an award. I'm speaking at the Altitude Summit, which is from March 1st through the 6th in Palm Springs, California. Okay. Fly out of there, go to Halifax, Nova Scotia to speak at the International Women's Day. Okay. Um, so, I, you know, from Microsoft to LinkedIn to Google to a lot of different companies in between. I speak at a lot of financial services companies and really teaching the art and science of pitching. Okay. Um, pitching and everything like that. Uh, so I have quite a few speaking engagements, and then, you know, my individual clients who are looking for how do they pitch themselves to media and into investors. Right. And then the corporate clients, when you talk about, uh, you know, working with their sales teams and really getting them to understand who is it you're really speaking to, Mm -hmm. not this pie in the sky type thing, but listen, how do you speak to them on their level? Because, you know, I have a young lady now, she's in my group and she sent me her speaker one. And I remember looking at it like this, you ever read something that didn't... It has all great words, but they mean nothing. Yeah, all, uh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> Just great words. But all the mean time. Absolutely nothing. I was like, babe, you're a powerful communicator. You're a strong woman. I don't want to see a picture of you, a side profile. When I'm booking a speaker, I want to see, I want to see power. Yes. I want to see confidence. Yes. No side profile. None all of this smiling. No, I want to know I'm booking. I'm about that life. Yes. When I'm reading your speaker bio, I said, this is really nice and really cute. Yes. I said, but it tells me absolutely nothing. nothing. I said, go back to scratch, write it in layman's terms, and then we can prettify it later. Yes. I said, well, I really want to know what is it you do? Who are you really speaking to? Do you want to speak to colleges and universities? Do you want to speak to companies and organizations? Well, that's a Who mistake. Really that's a mistake that they do. They try to fluff it up and make these big words, but it tells me nothing. 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 I get that Nothing. all the time. And I said, a real speaker will know all real, the time. Yeah. A real speaker and a real conference organizer will know it. They'll look at me like, <laughs> "That's cute." No, right? Right? No. I get. All and I said, "It's the little things you're not thinking about." Because yeah. I mean, when people do on resume, <clears throat> I don't have a resume anymore. Right? I don't have. Right. I don't know. No. I ask for my resume anymore. I said, "Yeah, they want my speaker one, my media kit, and stuff like that." If you're not saying anything of importance, I can't. I can't get you booked anywhere. I just right. can't. Mm-hmm. So, so she was just like, oh my God, I, I, you know, I thought I was, I thought I was, I thought I was, you know, blowing up. I said, you, who are you blowing up to? I don't know who you're speaking to. Right. And then she sent me her little thing that she sends to different colleges and, and universities. I said, can, can we be a little bit more specific about why you're passionate about this particular topic? It's one thing to say you talk about it. Why are you passionate about it? Why, well, why are you passionate? Do? But what, what do you do for them? Yeah. Or that's it too. There not, nothing in there will say what what are you doing for them? Yeah. Talk, talking a good game is one thing. I mean, where your where are the takeaways? Where the like yeah. people don't want to just hear like that's it's, like I have a young lady who wants to be a motivational speaker. I said, first of all, it's a dime a dozen. I said, right. we need to figure out what makes you truly unique in this space. I said, because exactly. honestly, I'm not a motivational speaker. I said, you'll get that. Right. You'll that's get not that. my thing. Right. And you know how many motivational speakers are out there on the platform today? Right. And and yeah, oh, I mean, yeah uh, and sob stories are a dime a dozen. Even if you have overcome it, oh, that's that's cute. I said, but I'm the killer pitch master. That's a totally different beast it's, altogether. Right. It's very niche. It's very specific. Yeah. I mean, if you have a sob story you want to 
put in there and use that as your content because you got to be a storyteller. You got to be a storyteller. But that cannot be your end all. And again, what is the audience walking away? What are you doing for them? Yes. How are you helping? What's in it them? for them? Them. And that's why it's very mm-hmm. important. And I'm glad we, we're at this part of the the conversation because so many times when people listen to speakers, they're like, "Oh, I could, I could do that." If you, okay, a great speaker will make you think that anything is possible, and I, and it is right. But they've worked hard to make it look easy. They've worked hard to make it. They work very, and and you know what, too? And this is something that's so simple. Make sure your spelling is correct. Make sure that. My client loves it when I do that. Spelling is correct. I got, Mm -hmm. and I love her. (laughs) But she made, she she spelled speaker wrong and it made us look like preacher. And trust me, those people who are deciding who's speaking are going to notice. They will notice that. They, they will, will notice. notice. They will notice that something that specific. They will. Well, they, well, probably just as a curse word, another one made it look like pecker. So, <laughs> you know, make sure your spelling is correct. <laughs> make sure your spelling is correct. I mean, you know, you know the name of my book, right? Yes. You no, know, it's not for the faint at heart, right? You know it. Yeah. No, it, you know, but you know, I've had somebody say to me, "Oh, change it to the art of the killer pitch." Oh, that's cute. No, know. know your audience. And so, when people started getting into me with the respectability politics, right? Babe, you have a law degree, you have this and that. Yes, but here's the thing: it's not controversial for controversy's sake. No, it's really who am I really talking to? A certain right. type of woman. Know your audience. You have to know your audience, right? So, as this guy wrote, called me and said, "You know, change it. I sell it to the government." That, that, well, this ain't necessarily a governmental book. This and is, that's this not is a book the audience. audience. And that's why it stood out. Why do you think when Forbes magazine wrote about it, they the title of their article was Pitching is Bitching? I thought I had a, I, I, I really love had, it. I went love to that. I, I had a moment. I said, that's in Forbes. Forbes right. magazine. Right. That, that's right. the title right. of my article. Right. In, in Forbes magazine. Wait, wait a minute. They don't yeah. even write like that. <laughs> that? Like, oh my god and i was like they wrote about my book and mind you i remember reading an article that my it was in my angelou or it was tony tony morris well they were saying years ago when one of the i went to work for the new york times and they were like they can never review two black writers together because then it just felt like, like the black experience right right so i thought here's forbes magazine who reached out to me about my particular business book and I didn't have to dumb things down. I didn't have to change anything. They reviewed it and told me, listen, we're not going to say if it's going to be good or bad. Right. Whatever happens is whatever happens. Right. And I had to be cool with that. Like, right. I don't care if you trash it. It's Forbes magazine. I don't right. care. Right. Trash it. You're going to love so this. to read the article and, the, and just feel that pride. And it's, like, in its entirety, right. I'm a in black woman who got in Forbes and I didn't buy it, didn't steal it, didn't do any of those sort of things. Right. So go back to you have to know your audience these companies these corporations they're not looking for cookie cutter anymore i'm sorry they're not no they're just so not if you're going to talk about leadership if you're going to talk about certain things and that's the, those right. are the things i talk about i talk about specifically pitching right. branding sales and public speaking that's all i talk about i don't take any other um speaking engagements outside of that wheelhouse I could but, and, do and you it, but that's not my zone of genius. But that, but that, right. That's not who you are. That's not your zone of genius. I actually had a black woman come to me five years ago mm-hmm. in, in LA and she said, can you coach me to talk like a white woman? I was like, what? I and, don't know where she's coming from. Okay. Yeah. And, and I knew, and I knew that you would. I was like, excuse me. I was like, why? She said, well, I was called to speak at this conference but I was told I need to talk like a white woman. And she's talking to me <laughs> and she's talking to me like this. I oh, said, wow. And she, and she found me cause I used to go to Toastmasters and she found me at a Toastmasters meeting and I'm talking like her now. <laughs> right. I said, why would you do that? Well, they want to hire me to speak and, but they want me to talk like a white woman. And again, I said, why would you do that? We said, I would love to take your money. And she was going to pay me a big dollar. And her husband was a producer in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I would love to take your money, but I will not take it. No. Because I will not teach you how to speak like a white woman. And my advice to you is to go back to them. If they want to hire you, they love your message of your book. 
they will hire you on the merits of who you are. Yeah. And she did. And they hired her and she spoke her true authenticity of who she was as a black woman. And she came later and she thanked me and she gave me a note. And- I would have thanked you too, because I, I definitely understand, you know, where she's, where she's coming from. Mm-hmm. But I'm so glad you gave her that advice. In fact, I spoke in New Pulse, which is upstate New York. Yeah, um, two I know weeks that. Ago. Mm-hmm. And of course, when I walked in the room, very few people look like me. Mm-hmm. And you know, I stand out as a speaker because, you know, I like to wear certain clothes. So, yeah, I, I need to stand out. This is what we do. We we don't just walk in like, well, I look like everybody else. Oh, no, we don't do that. Yeah. And so many of the women were like, oh, you must be the speaker. You stand out. That I was like, exactly. Pay attention. Every, every, pay attention to everything. So when I got up there to speak, you know, some of the, some yeah. of the, some of the women of color, right. I would say there was more than five of us and I was one of the five. Right. Okay. Like, so how'd you get this? And I was like. Because I'm the killer pitch master. And I'm like, do, do, like, did you have to know somebody? Did you? Really? No. no, I am who I am. I said, I promise you, I said, tonight you're going to be in for a treat because you're not going to get the average. You're going to get the extraordinary. And then when I go up there, like I make people laugh. I make them like right. shout and scream and everything. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm not normal. I've been doing this 25 years. Yeah. So in 25 years, I've learned how to read an audience to see, you know, yeah. where I need to change direction. I said, these are things you learn truly on the job. You don't just right. learn it from reading a book. I said, I am right. professional grade. Right. So right. I have no desire to be like Sally and I have no desire yeah. to be like Bonquisha. I am Precious Williams. Right. Try, I'm battle tested. Right. Battle of right. You've been you've been there. Well, that Trailblazer Award that I mentioned, yeah. I also I also got the award for the radio personality of the year at that same conference. Right. And, and the reason that I'm sharing it is because the two ladies that nominated me are dear friends of mine and they're black women. Yeah. So I go to this conference and my husband comes with me. We're the only two white people in this whole conference of 500 people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I always, our world. <laughs> I, right, right. So I'm all, I'm always harassing them because I'll I'll invite them to places and they're like, You want me to do what and go where? So we get to this conference, I look at them and I said, You wanted me to do what and go where? Yeah. <laughs> so I just care I, I carry that and they look at me like, We know you can you got this. So I said, Well, you should have warned me, I would have dressed a little bit more appropriate. So I would have like I would have been a little bit more like on this. So yeah. <laughs> we, we bust and we joke about this all all the time, as I think it should be, you know. And I definitely think that that's how you know we should be and you know and inclusive with diversity and yes. you know and just embracing each other. So I just love it. I would really love to go on. I know we'll be on time. My production team is going to be like, he did Chris, it again. I got you. you did it again. You did it again. So uh, just let our listeners know if we got the we even on radio. I'll let our listeners know where they can learn more about you. And, you can, um, yes. yeah. you can learn more about me. I'm Precious Williams, the hashtag killer pitch master. I help you slay old competition. Uh, my website is www.perfectpitches.com by precious.com again that's www.perfectpitchesbyprecious.com on linkedin i am precious williams killer pitch master on twitter i am at perfect pitch p on uh, facebook i am at perfect pitch p and on instagram i am perfect pitches p if you want to reach out to me by email i am precious at perfect Pitches by Precious.com. And I definitely suggest you go to my website because not only do I have, uh, you know, great tips, tricks, and techniques, I do have some free resources that will really help you, you know, put together your pitches. But also, if you want to work with me, please check out my shop page. And that's where you can really get to see the things that I'm doing. My events page t- takes all of my speaking engagements that aren't private. All my speaking engagements that I do, you can look them up too. And just know that I am the author of the number one bestseller, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches for Women Entrepreneurs and Speakers Only, which teaches truly how to start pitching based on the characteristics of the seven women that you'll find in the book. So that's me in a nutshell. Precious Williams, Killer Pitchmaster. Uh, I just want to thank you for being here. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing, amazing conversation. And for everyone listening, just look for Perfect Precious. 
and you get a binder. <laughs> perfect, precious, perfect, perfect pitches, pitches, by pitches, by precious. Um, and you, you're going to find her just some um, um, amazing things, uh, amazing work. You're just going to love her. And again, precious, thank you. Thank you for being here. And again, that's how, all we have for today, um, folks. Just thank you for being here. Thank you for joining the Connie Five Show. And again, if uh, you're an artist, you're a speaker, and you have a message that you want to share, Check us out, talentconcierge.co, and we'll see you see you over there. And blue jeans and ballet, not two not two two people are alike, but love each other just the same. And remember, be kind to each other out there this week. I'm Connie yes. Five, and this is the Connie Five Show. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Hey y'all, it's Connie Five. Thank you for listening to the Connie Five Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to theconnyfifeshow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.